Hi, I'm Janelle Shala, and this is number 11 in my introduction videos to crystal healing. This video we're going to talk about feng shui and space clearing. Obviously it's a very big subject and I can't go into the whole thing in this little short space of time, but at least I can give you a quick overview that may, you may find helpful. One of the first rules of space clearing is just to make sure the energy is clear and that energy can flow. It's all about the flow of energy and the movement. If things can't move, if the energy can't flow, then things stick. So that's when you get stagnation, that's when things can become negative. First thing you do is look through the house, see if there's a lot of clutter, pieces of furniture that shouldn't be there. Uh, just look at the shape and imagine a colored wind moving around the room and see if you think it can flow through the room and out again. If that's the case, everything will be fine and you can take it from there. First thing you probably want is to just keep the energy clear and sparkling in the room. So things that we would use First and foremost, a cluster. You can use amethyst, which will have an extra calming dimension to it, or clear quartz, which just simply clarifies the energy. But you get, with all these different crystals pointing in lots of different directions, it just diffuses the energy and clears it and cleanses it. So very good for keeping the energy clear in an area. Also, you can have clusters of something like apophyllite, and in the case of apophyllite, even an apophyllite single pyramid will help to keep the space clear. In addition, you may find that there's areas where the energy is um, energy is coming into the house you don't want. We call it Shar Chi, poison arrow Chi. That means that it is too intense. Something like very, very bright sunlight, strong wind, things like that. So you want to break down the energy in some way. A lot of people just put a crystal, um, a hanging crystal in the window to try to break up the light if it's sunlight. But if you find that there's something like a edge of a building that's pointing directly towards your front door, that can be very bad. So you can use something like clear quartz point pointing at it. Also with the satin spar and selenite gypsums, you get a very, very directional energy. You see this spearhead shape from it. You can point that in the direction, put it in a window and point it in the direction of whatever is causing the, uh, the geopathic stress. You can also clear the energy by just having a cluster of sulfur. And another thing you can do is have a grid of clear quartz. I've got four clear quartz points on the table pointing inwards. That's one way to clarify the energy. And you can have one of these in each corner of the room. That will help to do that as well. A lot of people ask me about protection. This is a really important thing to a lot of people at the moment. I think we feel kind of stressed a lot of the time. We feel that we're under pressure from various places. Best protection crystals are the black ones, grounding crystals, anything that will keep you in your body, keep you from being vulnerable. And the first and foremost one I would say is the black tourmaline. This is a really powerful protection crystal. Even more so when black tourmaline has mica on it, like this one does. Mica reflects, it's very silvery and reflects away any negative energy. Smoky quartz is a good one, as is obsidian and jet. Another grounding crystal that is not black is garnet. Now I know this probably looks black because it's such a deep shade of red. It very nearly is black. When the light hits it in the right way, you get a kind of fiery red in it. This is also very protective. It's been used as a protection stone for hundreds of years, if not thousands. So a lot of people have problems these days because of computers. Uh, computer monitors, uh, mobile phones and the phones that we use that are cordless, they have they put out a huge amount of electromagnetic energy way beyond what our body's used to taking in. Crystals I use for this, this isn't every crystal healer, but this is how I work. Um, I find that the most powerful one again is black tourmaline. I use black tourmaline by the computer. I have one in front of my television. I use it around the mobile phones. I have tested it with an EMF reader where I can see that there's a difference between the EMF reading when I'm holding it between the reader and a computer, for example. And other people I know have tested this as well. They found the same thing. So I would go for the tourmaline, the black tourmaline specifically, above and beyond everything else. Other crystals that help to dampen down the energy of electromagnetic um, radiation are rose quartz, 
and rutilated quartz. Now, rutilated quartz is also known as angel hair quartz. You get these lovely golden or silver bits of fibers running through it. Rutile is titanium ore. Interestingly, one of the coloring agents of rose quartz is also titanium, and titanium is completely non-magnetic. Non My suspicion is this is why it works. Also mica. Now mica is used in, um, in the electrical industry. It dampens down and insulates. So you can use anything with mica on it to help dampen down electromagnetic frequency. In addition, you may have a problem from something like an old well beneath the house. It depends on how old your house is. There are a lot of houses like the one, the one I'm living in, the one you're seeing behind me at the moment. This is over 250 years old. The walls are about two foot thick. It's very likely there's a well underneath it or near it. When this happens, you get a kind of energy vortex through the building. And if you sense it, you feel something is not quite right, and you know that there's an old well, you can dampen down that energy using rose quartz again. It's one of the few times I think size does matter, because if you use a tiny piece of rose quartz, it will dampen it a little bit. You can use something like this a little bit more. If you use a big chunk of rose quartz, it will dampen it down completely. And it depends on how much it bothers you, whether you want to use a big piece or a small piece. Just see how it feels. Now, a couple of other things you can do to enhance the energy in the house is to place crystals in the relationship corner, for example. So if you want to have a love crystal, like rose quartz again, in the relationship corner, uh, the very, very simple, like down-to-earth explanation of the relationship corner is as you walk into the front door of your house, it's the far right-hand corner in the house. It's far more complicated than that, but you can use that. That will be enough because the intention is there. The other thing you may want to ha enhance is abundance, so you want to bring in wealth. You can do this by putting gold or something similar, one of the merchant stones, in the relationship corner. This is a genuine piece of gold. This is as it is mined. I think it's absolutely very beautiful. It's quite crystalline in the way it's formed, but very small, so difficult to see. But you can buy gold as gold leaf. This is 24 karat gold leaf in solution, which is specifically made as a feng shui cure. So it would be placed in the wealth corner of the home. Wealth corner facing the door as you enter it. It's the far left-hand corner. Another crystal that's known as a merchant stone is citrine. This is a natural citrine crystal. Very beautiful. Also cinnabar. Cinnabar is quite rare. It's also potentially toxic, so I don't necessarily recommend that you use it for this purpose. Another thing that you can do, water washes away energy. It's very, very cleansing, but it also can wash away positive energy. So anytime you flush a toilet, anytime you use a sink and water goes down the drain, that can be taking out good energy as well as bad. One of the ways of stopping this is to use a small clear quartz point like this. You can tape it onto the U-bend of the pipe, pointing upwards, so you're pointing the energy back into the room. You can also point it into the room from the down pipes from the toilet. You can do the same by putting a short, fat one in the drain pipe from your bath or from your shower. So that is a very quick thumbnail overview of crystals in feng shui.